Salutations, I am Skojo in 360. Yes, it's been quite a while since I put out a video. As I said in my previous video, life's just a little crazy right now. I'm transitioning out of being a professional video producer, going back into TV meteorology, and it's been quite a busy time. Now, I am still doing video production for a living, and I did get asked to create a video recently that gave me an opportunity to combine multiple formats. Now, as you probably know, you don't just have to use 360 in your videos. If you're just doing it for fun, great to just have a Insta360 ONE R or a GoPro Max or whatever and just use that and use the full 360. But if you wanna make some stories and what I would encourage you to do is try using multiple formats. Now, in the video you're about to see, I used a 360 camera, a drone, and a traditional video camera, and some stock footage. So multiple formats all going on here. Let's get to the video and then we'll circle back and talk about how you can add this to up your game in making stories. It's really just a matter of time. Within a generation or two, humans will begin to colonize Mars. And the challenges of maintaining human life in such a severe environment will be a daily challenge for them to face. But eventually gathering rocks will become routine, lab work will become monotonous, and the endless sand will become confining. It's then that they may look to the polar north and to the south in hopes of turning their bulky space boots into ski boots. That's right, with ice on the surface and less gravity than Earth, the aerials would be epic. And that's about it. I'm meteorologist Scott Ellis, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the snow on Mars. The snow on Mars is mostly carbon dioxide snow, closer to what we would consider dry ice on Earth. Earth's snow falls in pretty little packages, but Mars's snow is so small, it looks more like fog, and that rules out any hopes of a Martian snowball fight. And while Earth's snow falls in beautiful crystalline patterns, Mars' snow has triangle-like edges, turning any Earthling's walk into the snowstorm into a human dartboard. So that's it? The first inhabitants of Mars are not gonna have access to recreation? Oh, yeah they will. The newest Mars vehicle slated for launch in 2020 will be carrying with it a drone. And as a meteorologist who knows a little something about drones, let me break it down for you. The atmosphere on Mars is about 1% of that on Earth. So in order for the drone's propellers to spin fast enough to provide lift, this drone will require a much larger motor and massively expanded battery capabilities. But imagine the payoff being able to explore Mars with a Martian bird's eye view, and even assessing repairs from an angle that would be impossible without it. And once we've flown around Mars, who knows where we'll go next? And what the answer will be when that planet's colonizers are asked the question, how's the weather up there today? Okay, so I know some of you are saying there was only a couple of scenes with 360 and I didn't really use it to its full maximum capacity and you are correct there. For the record, that was a GoPro Max. I really did very little touch up in post-production. I added just a little bit of shadows here and there, but it really looked great out of the camera, but you could have used the Insta360 ONE or a similar kind of thing. That's why I've started using 360 now in some of my professional gigs because you're getting clean enough video and both the ONE R and the Max have really good audio. I mean, that was right out of the camera. There were no extra microphones there. So I'm impressed with 360 enough. I'm starting to add it in. Now, I didn't use the full like reframed tiny planets and stuff like that only because it wasn't appropriate for this piece. But sometimes tiny planets and things like that could be fun because a lot of people, though you've seen a lot of them, maybe haven't seen them. So it's something you could add in there. But as you can tell with that story, I use multiple formats, a drone, a 360 camera, and stock footage, and then I have a Lumix GH5 that I'm using that I'm shooting out of right now. So multiple formats to help tell the story. It's a great way to expand your resume, and especially if you wanna get into doing professional video, you might wanna just check out some of those other formats. I strongly encourage, I've got one of those Mavic Airs. Love the thing, it's absolutely phenomenal. The only downside is you can't really put a 360 camera on it. I got my 1X on there, but it's it off, 
it bogged it down quite a bit. I did get some footage. I do have a video of that on my channel, but it's not the greatest if you want to add 360, but man, 4K aerial footage is just phenomenal. So up your game, get into adding 360 reframed over capture footage into your projects and you'll be able to tell a much better story. Now, if you have any stories about incorporating 360 in your projects, please leave a link down below, give us some comments, share your information. We are the 360 Community Podcast, so we're all gonna learn this together. All right, I am Skojo in 360. I gotta get out of here. I am getting back to doing more weather video production. And by the way, if you need any video production, you know, hit me up. I gotta make some money as I'm transitioning into my next career. All right, that is it. We are out of here. And of course, we leave every show the same way. Are you ready?